assalamu alaikum friends welcome to sbr revision series for september 2021 and today we are going to cover is 12 income tax very important topic and there are very high chances of this standard coming in your exam sbr exam so let's start with the topics we are going to introduce to the taxation okay there are two types of tax then we are going to go in depth uh, regarding deferred tax how do you calculate deferred tax how do you account for deferred tax and some specific scenarios okay so let's start with the introduction to taxation there are two elements to tax one is known as current tax okay current tax means the amount payable to the tax authorities in relation to the uh, trading activity for the current period and the next one is deferred tax deferred tax is an accounting measure that you are using to match the tax effect of transactions with the accounting treatment because the tax transactions okay the tax effect of transactions and the accounting treatments are different you understand it for the purpose of calculation of tax okay the items that you are deducting or adding from your accounting treatment and the and the uh, accounting which is done by the tax people the calculations which is done by the tax people are different so because of that difference there is a term known as temporary difference temporary differences are created because this difference is temporary over the long period of time the difference will go off that's why we have to recognize a deferred tax asset so in short tax expense includes two type of tax current tax and movement in deferred tax plus or minus it depends whether it is a deferred tax asset or a deferred tax liability so starting with deferred tax according to the accrual concept what does accrual concept says the tax effect of a transaction should be reported in the same accounting period as the transaction itself the day you are recording that transaction tax effect of that transaction also has to be recorded at the same day same accounting period according to the accrual concept but deferred tax is recognized on temporary differences between the accounting and the tax treatment of a transaction there is a time difference between the accounting and the tax treatment of that transaction that's why we are calculating this deferred tax on a temporary difference you should know how to calculate their temporary differences okay temporary differences is simply the difference between the carrying amount of an asset or a liability it could be anything and its tax base the tax base will be given to you okay you have to do some adjustments the carrying amount also will be given to you but you have to do some adjustments sometimes there is no adjustment from the purpose of the carrying amount but in the tax base there is sometimes there are adjustments to the carrying amount but not in the tax base so if there is adjustment in any one of it definitely there will be a difference right there will be a difference temporary difference examples of temporary differences are okay this are not the only examples but for you to understand some examples very few examples tax deductions for the cost of non current asset that have a different pattern to the right of asset in the financial statements you have written off in a different way okay but the tax authority they are doing it in a different way the tax deduction for the cost of non current asset so there is a difference between this two the way you are writing of the tax deduction versus the one tax uh, person are doing the tax authority so temporary difference will create from this second assets are revalued upwards in the financial statements but no adjustment is made for the tax purpose for the tax purpose you are not going to include that that means your tax base will not change it will remain same but your carrying amount of your asset will go up so because of that temporary differences will create development cost are capitalized and amortized to profit and loss because development cost is an intangible uh, asset right so if it's capitalized you have to amortize it and where do you amortize it in the profit and loss but for deducted for tax purposes as incurred but for the purpose of tax purpose you are deducting it that means as an expense you are deducting it you are not capitalizing it so because of that also there's a difference temporary difference so how do you calculate deferred tax and how do you account for deferred tax very important so you calculate for deferred tax in order to calculate the first step is you have to determine the temporary difference you first have to find the temporary differences because on that only you are going to calculate a deferred tax 
okay so if the carrying amount is more than the tax base the difference is known as taxable temporary difference it's a liability if it's the other way around tax base is more than carrying amount then the temporary difference is known as deductible temporary difference it's an asset okay remember this when is it a liability and when it's an asset because sometimes students put liability for asset asset for liability they get confused it's a very common scenario right where students often get confused with these two things so which tax rate should we use whichever the tax rate at that time when you are realizing the asset and settling the liability at that time you have to apply that tax rate because the transaction might have happened today today the tax rate might be different but this deferred tax you will be calculating what in the future when you are actually settling that as realizing that asset or settling that liability that time what are the tax rate you are applying that tax rate only on the temporary differences okay This rate must be based on legislation enacted or substantively enacted by the reporting date. Deferred tax assets and deferred tax liabilities. Remember, they are not discounted to present value. You see, the transaction might have happened today, but that deferred tax asset or liability you are recognizing it in the future. So, because you are recognizing it in the future, you are not bringing back to the present value. No need. IS 12 says no need to discount. Because it's very confusing. This is, this is very complex. You will not be able to do that. That's the reason you are not discounting it to the present value. Because sometimes deferred tax asset you might not recognize it also. Right? So that's the reason. Because of so many complex uh, situations and all. They, make it, they made it very simple. No need to discount to the present value. Now how to account for that deferred tax? So the entry. Whether... To profit or loss or whether to other comprehensive income it depends on the opening and your closing balance opening net liability or asset minus closing net liability or asset the difference between this two is will go to the profit or loss or other comprehensive income you need to remember this thing if an item that is giving rise to a deferred tax is dealt with in profit or loss you first have to see that item what is giving uh, rise to that deferred tax if that is recognizing profit and loss, that deferred tax also will be recognizing profit and loss. But if it is recognized in OCI, deferred tax also will be recognized in OCI. So OCI for OCI, profit for loss for profit and loss. That item means, for example, this uh, deferred tax asset arose because of the revaluation of non-current asset. So that revaluation gain of non-current asset is recognized under other comprehensive income. So your deferred tax also will be recognized under other comprehensive income. This is one example. Okay specific scenarios now there are specific scenarios where deferred tax has an impact one such scenario is share option scheme so when you are giving a share option scheme it's an option you are giving right so how do you calculate the amount of tax amount of the tax relief granted this is based on the intrinsic value of the option what is the intrinsic value market price minus exercise price at the exercise date so this delayed tax relief gives rise to a deferred tax asset. Remember, delayed tax relief will give to deferred tax asset only. Next, unused tax losses. This is very common. Very, very common scenario is unused tax losses, whether to recognize deferred tax asset or not. So this is when an entity has tax losses. Then IS 12F says they can recognize deferred tax asset, but only to the extent that they are sure that they are going to get a future taxable profit. For example, you have tax losses of 10 million and you don't have any profit in the future. There is no probability. Then you cannot recognize deferred tax asset at all. Let's say you have 10 million loss again. Now you have a future taxable profit of 5 million. So only 5 million of deferred tax asset you can recognize. Only up to the amount of that future taxable profit. You can recognize your deferred tax asset. Okay. Next and the last business combination. So when you're calculating that net asset, remember the identifiable net assets of the subsidiary. You are consolidating at fair value, right? You are taking the fair value of the net asset, but the tax base says no. They will take at the cost only. Cost from where? From the individual subsidiary's individual financial statements. 
they are going to take the cost of the net asset for example each asset and liability from the subsidiary's individual financial statement tax base so because of that temporary difference is created and this will give rise to deferred tax in the consolidated financial statements why deferred tax deferred tax means deferred tax liability okay if it's a deferred tax asset the word asset will be there next to it if nothing is there just deferred tax means deferred tax it's a deferred tax liability because deferred tax liability situations are more common than deferred tax asset that's the reason they sometimes don't write liability they just write deferred tax how deferred tax why deferred tax why not deferred tax asset ask this question you need to ask because carrying amount of assets and liabilities what are you including fair value fair value right but tax base is uh, taking it in the cost individual financial statement does not take it fair value at the cost so definitely your fair value will be more than the cost that means carrying amount will be more than the tax base hence it's a deferred tax liability next provision for unrealized profit this all scenarios are relating now business combination only whenever you have a business combination this thing comes not just not, not in the normal goes of business that means provision for unrealized profit provision for unrealized profit means subsidiary is selling to parent parent selling to subsidiary intra group sell and purchases under this condition what happens provision for unrealized profit remember on consolidation you eliminate it so because of that your carrying amount of inventory reduces inventory is an asset so carrying amount of an asset goes down and in the tax base they are taking the cost only they don't eliminate the unrealized profit for the tax base for the tax base they only take the cost of the inventory from the individual financial statement so because now they have eliminated inventory goes down in the carrying amount but not in the tax base what happens tax base is more than carrying amount of inventory so because of that it's a deferred tax asset now you need to understand whether it's a deferred tax or asset or deferred tax liability for that you first have to understand which is more tax base or carrying amount of that asset or liability if tax base is more deferred tax asset if it's less than deferred tax liability goodwill itself does not give rise to deferred tax goodwill see we get goodwill no we had to calculate goodwill when we acquired a subsidiary for the first time that goodwill is not subject to deferred tax asset deferred tax sorry you don't have to calculate any deferred tax because is 12f excludes goodwill from it eliminate it so that net asset also when you are taking without goodwill so exam kit questions we are over with is 12 exam kit questions covers this question hudson holes and tiles i have covered all the three questions so is 12 also can come under group questions group accounting question number 1 is 12 can come under question number 2 3 can come in any question is 12 can come in any question you have to be prepare for it but usually when is 12 question is asked it's asked for uh, many marks so be prepared for this most of the time but if it comes for less then the only part that usually comes is whether you have to recognize your deferred tax asset or not if it's asked for less marks but if it's asked for more marks then definitely you have to do some calculations also okay so that's it guys and see you next in is 16 till then thanks for watching and see you in the next video